Tony Woods is a legendary stand-up comedian. And if you're in the Austin area, the weekend after July 4th, you have a chance to see Tony at Joe Rogan's Comedy Mothership. He's going to be there July 7th through 9th. Get the tickets. They're available at ComedyMothership.com. Tony, thank you so much for the time. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. It is a, an absolute pleasure to speak with you. You are a titan of this industry, influential to so many. And maybe most importantly, most selfishly for me, you're going to be here in Austin headlining Joe Rogan's Comedy Mothership here in a couple of weekends. I believe it's July 7th through 9th. There will not yeah. be tickets a day or two before you actually perform. So I'm trying to get out in front of this a little bit and give people a week and a half to grab those tickets. Go do so at ComedyMothership.com. Have you had a chance to see Joe's Club just yet? I mean, obviously, it's no, a brave review of audience and, and uh, comedians alike, with the comedians saying it's very much a comedian's club. And on the fan side of things, uh, I've seen four or five shows at this point, and I'm actually going to be seeing you, I believe, on Saturday night, which I can't wait for. It is, I mean, nothing, no expense is spared by Joe in the process with this new club. Wow. I don't I don't want to see it. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't want to see it until I get there. You know, it's, it's, I don't want it to be like Star Wars for me. You know, a buddy of mine saw Star Wars because mm -hmm. his uncle was a diplomat or something like that. Mm -hmm. So they, they got to see Star Wars at the embassy. Like about about a week before it came out. I mean, the very first Star Wars. Wow. So all week, he, yo, it's the best thing you got to see this movie. It's this is that. He goes, okay, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you nothing about it, but I'll tell you this one thing, and that's all I'll tell you. So that went on all week. So by the time I actually saw, and, and another thing is, I didn't see it until like a week after. I didn't see it on the first weekend. I saw it the following weekend. And I slept so hard. And I woke up at the end and people were clapping. <laughs> and I'm like, what in the world did I miss? <laughs> so, fell asleep in the middle of the movie. Yeah, I don't know if it's the middle of the beginning or what. As a matter of fact, I went to sleep, you know, when uh, when they run, the, in the beginning, they're running the words through space. And you got to read that. Yeah. The subtitle. Yeah. Yeah, I was in the Navy then, man. I was I, dude, I fell asleep. I was like, I worked all the time. I fell asleep and then so I stood in line again another two hours to see it. <laughs> I, I got to see this shit. But by then, I've heard so many people talking about it. I knew everything. There was no surprises for me. Right. And then, I, and to this day, I've never been a Star Wars fan. I was like, it didn't, it didn't move me at all. So... I'm in that same that. boat, Tony. As a matter of fact, one of the few movies I've ever fallen asleep in the theater, it wasn't the original Star Wars. I think technically it was the first episode, but it was like the fourth one that they put out. It was yeah. incredibly boring for me, but I've never been a big Star Wars person, like even going back to childhood. Yeah. So that's the one where they cut open the, the horse thing and he had to get in to save himself from freezing. No, that's the... Um... <laughs> Here we are. Yeah, whichever, whichever one that was, I was like, you know what? I give up. I can't. Empire Strikes <laughs> Back. Yeah. Which arguably was the best of those first three. But uh, yeah, it's it's interesting having a, kids who are supposed to be in Star Wars and they try and get into it and they're asking you all these questions. And you're mm -hmm. just like, kid, I don't know. Like, that's not my world. I can tell you about Luke Skywalker and Han Solo and Princess Leia and yeah. Chewbacca and the robots. Darth Vader. That's about it, though. That's as far as my knowledge goes. Yeah, they they it's all I mean, it's crazy now. I don't know. I but I, I've never sat through a whole through a whole Star Wars film. So when you I hear, sleep, when you hear mm -hmm. the idea, a uh, comedian's comedy club. What what do you picture when you hear a concept like that? Because obviously there are great clubs to work in this country. Joe's yeah. is the first. I would say uh, exposed brick, uh, wooden floors, low ceilings, uncomfortable chairs. 
Because hmm. if you got like nice, comfortable, plush seats, you don't go to sleep. And, and if you have like a, a super delicious recipe, you know, a, a, a menu and everything, you're going to eat and you're going to be, you don't go to sleep. It's just not like, uh, what's this place out in LA? Um, in Burbank. What's the name of that place? The food is super good. And it's it's like a living room. It's mm -hmm. nice, comfortable seats. Hmm. You go to sleep, yeah. He's like, he lay out, you know. See, it, it's not, you, for comedy, the seats shouldn't be so comfortable. The aesthetic shouldn't be so, yeah. You want to see pictures and stuff like that. But, you know, it, it should never be like as pretty as Caroline's. You don't want to be able to relax too much. Yeah, because comedy is uncomfortable. Comedy is uncomfortable. <laughs> Most of the chairs in there are kind of squeezed in, like I think at any good comedy club. And I think Joe yeah. knew that knew that about the food too, because no food is served in there, just drinks. Yeah. It's just that one more thing that's on your table that's drawing your attention away from the stage. You have the servant mm -hmm. staff having to run around a little bit more for that stuff too. The waft of fried food can be a little bit distracting. Yeah. So in looking uh -huh. at your uh, Instagram, have you been jet setting around the world in the last couple of weeks or these old pictures that you're posting of like you in Paris, France and you eating soup in Peru. Yeah, those are old pictures, man. Okay. <laughs> but it gets it gets everybody buzzing, doesn't it? Sure does. Okay, here's what happened. As a, a friend of mine, he's um what's the name? He lives in New Jersey, but he was trying to be funny. And he says, Did I see you in Paris? Um, um buying a bag or something like that. I'm like, maybe you did. So I posted up the pictures of that guy photobombing me. I wonder who that joker is. I should have his picture one. You should put his picture up and find out who he is. Uh, but I was on tour with Louis C.K. and we were in Paris. And uh, Louis' road man, Jalea, she took my picture. And that guy behind me pulled up a shirt and did the titty photobomb. <laughs> Because <laughs> she said, she kept saying, Let me, let me get one more, Tony. Let me get one more. And she's laughing. I'm like, What's up? <laughs> Okay, all right. Boom, come to find out he was back there photobombing with his nipple out. What was it like performing in Paris? It was cool. Yeah. It was me, Joe Mackey, Louis CK, uh, uh, who else? The, the, the girl who Louis uh, knows over there. She's like one of the top female comedians over there. As a matter of fact, they say she's like the Ellen DeGeneres of uh, France. I'm like, wow. Anyway, she performed. We performed. And then after that, we, we were just coming from Lisbon. We were in uh, Portugal. We went to Paris. Then we got the train up to Brussels. Then from Brussels, we went up to Amsterdam. Oh, my God. Amen. What a trip. Yeah, man. It was fun. Is that the most fun tour you've ever been on? Hell no. <laughs> we put the U in fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was because that was um that was an adult comedy tour. Okay. You know what I'm saying? With me, Louie, and uh, uh Joe Mackey and Leah. Because that was an adult. That's you know, that's that's oh look at that. Let's let's go see the uh what's the name of the what's the name of the church with a little where the humpback dude live? Oh, no, to no. The uh, no, to no. Notre Dame. Yeah, Cathedral. right. And and it had just you know it just burned up. You, just, you could still smell the smoke. Mm. So you know what I'm saying. We did stuff like that. We went to the Eiffel Tower. Uh, the last time I was in Paris, I saw the Eiffel Tower. It was somewhere in town. But <laughs> we were at, man. We was running around, going to clubs, going to bars. You know, you know what they say over there. <laughs> I'm going to take you to the top discotheque in Paris. <laughs> so, so nobody cared about, you know, going to see the church or the Eiffel Tower. Nobody ever, yeah. <laughs> see, that's what I'm saying, because that was, that was when I put the U in fun. But now, I'm like, so when was this church built again? <laughs> Back then, I didn't give a damn. So, but, it, you know, but I've done Australia. I, the first time I went to Australia was me and a guy named Greer Barnes. And we got down, man. We had a good time. As a matter of fact, I passed out after being there for uh, three days. I passed out. 
in the club. Wow. And come, yeah. And so, of course, everybody assumed the worst. Oh, man, he must have took some bad drugs or something like that. And when I got to the uh, hospital, they said, well, you're dehydrated. And this used to happen to a lot of sailors because they would come down and it's just that they couldn't handle the southern hemisphere. Hmm. And he was and he was looking at me like, <laughs> and then I said, "What do you What do you mean?" He said, it, he said, "It happens to some people." I said, "So you're trying to say like this is my natural habitat? I should be good." And <laughs> I said, "Which well, just goes to prove, man, the water's been tainted. Some, you know, somebody put something in the juice." What he tell you you have scurvy or something? If you if he's saying that you have something that pirates used to get, like a vitamin C deficiency. Yeah, like um, like how people, it, it happens to people from the northern hemisphere, and huh. they go down to the southern hemisphere, and they, and what it is, is I had just like, with me, with me and Grill, uh, like every day party while playing basketball, going to the club, doing comedy, going to the casino, what, 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 sleeping, no, that wasn't involved, mm. but. Uh, <laughs> And then, and then uh, the doctors that was dehydrated, so they had IV in me, and they slept were like, for three days. Me. Yeah, I, well, not I, I. Let me see. That was that night. That happened that night around ten or eleven. And I think I woke up the next day around six. Damn. I started all over again. Just remember, drink water. <laughs> Freaking yeah. warrior, man. Sleep is one of those things, like here's how important sleep is. Like if you were to deny yourself sleep, water, and food, a lack of sleep is the first thing that would kill you. Yeah. Oh, water. And uh, when I first moved to New York, it was like 91. And I was just coming back from uh, the military. And sleep is always like when you're on duty and stuff like that, like, you know, you can sleep for like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I could. I, I could sleep standing up, all kind of stuff. Can't do that now, but back then. You learn you learn where to squeeze it in in the military is what I've always Yes. Said. And I will be in a comedy club. You can ask anybody. You can ask Joe Rogan. They would come and wake me up. See, you're on next, man. There's three more than you. Well, you wake me up when he's done. <laughs> and I'll, oh, shit. <laughs> I what do you just stretch right out like a cat and then walk on stage and you're ready to go? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. All the time. I lay down in the back hall at, at a place called the Boston Comedy Club in Manhattan. Just lay out in the back and just be dead asleep. <sighs> and then somebody come and wake me up and boom. And I go up and boom and kill. No. What What is the process for you, Tony, like for uh, not just joke creation but also how often you're turning over your act so there's a couple different schools of thought with regards to this some guys are known for telling some of the same really good jokes over and over again seinfeld has a rep for that obviously burt kreischer and the machine i mean the guys made a whole movie out of it at this point but uh, a lot oh. of comedians louis ck included uh they they work at a, a much greater clip at that now louis is maybe one extreme in terms of uh turning over material but how do you feel about that I just, I just, I, I seem to find myself in adventures all the time. Mm. And I just talk about those things. Mm. And um, like one particular bit can be 30 years in the making. Mm. Like, okay, there's one bit I did on the Comedy Jam way back when I said uh, that a woman sneezed and she covered her nose. But she had an earring hole. But the earring wasn't there. She had an earring and she sneezed him. And a, and, a, and a booger shot out. And he got on my shirt. And she goes, I'm sorry. And then a bubble came up. <laughs> Stupid. And then I said, I fought the transit cop. The transit cop had one, uh, had like a little arm. Yeah. So if you think about that, that's a, I would tell people, like, that would, at the time, like that's a 20, 20 years in the making. Because hmm. the, the the woman with the with the earring, that was at one time, that was at another time. The guy with the little arm, that was in sixth grade. I fought the guy with a little arm in sixth grade. Oh man. 
Like a, dude, dude literally had like one T Rex arm. Yeah, he didn't. I didn't start it. His buddies started it because I was, you know, not. I guess flirting with his sister, but you know, just I liked her. She liked me, mm-hmm. and but I think his buddies liked her, including and so they, the guy they, with the T Rex arm. That was his sister, mm. and he said, uh, "Hey, man, I heard you just mess with my sister. So I wasn't messing with your sister." Said, yes, yeah, yeah, because uh, his friends said, "Yeah, you you hit her or something." I didn't hit her. What is that? I messed with the rope. You know, and then she, she said, you better stop. Like that, but it was just, you know. Like what sixth graders do, messing up double dodge. Yeah, it's kitty flirting. That's what it is, kitty flirting. Hmm. And um, and she, and then, and I laughed at him because he had the arm, like, come on, you know, you don't want none of this. <laughs> and, and of course, the kids circle around us, we square off, and I, I took the first punch. I was hitting him a couple of times. He just kept squaring off. He kept doing like this. With the with the little arm. It was just and I was like, what? <laughs> it was it was distracting. Because <laughs> I'm like, I want to go, what are you gonna what are you gonna do with that? Like and it's like you just he kept doing it and you keep looking, then whop with the long arm. Mm. Yes, motherfucker. You know, girl, what, wait a second. Did he like, hit you with the long arm? Long arm because he distracts you with the little turkey <laughs> leg. You know, he's like, you motherfucker. And so he's doing like this. He's winding it up. And and like, and it was crazy because he would like do like that. He would stop. And, and you look that way. Bam, he gets you. Bam, he gets you. Like, but you could not not look at that little arm. <laughs> and with the long arm, bam, 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 like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, it was like, and these Did you was, swing back after that, or were you so so surprised I, at the days that you just I, backed away? I rushed his ass. And that was a bad mistake, too. Because I rushed him, and he put me in a, he, you know, put me in a headlock. And he went karat, karat, with the little with the little turkey leg, man. <laughs> like, uh, uh, so I wasn't even hitting him back. I was trying to get his arm from around my neck. You know, he wasn't like choking me, but he just had me like, you know, and just crack, 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 crack with with the little with the little arm. And it had no hands or nothing. It was it looked like a, a an uncircumcised dangling. Oh, it looked like an anteater's mouth. Okay, that, I should have said that. It looked like an anteater's mouth. <laughs> I said, look, <laughs> but it felt like a fucking turkey leg. <laughs> Son of a bitch, a frozen one. Correct. Well, even if physically it doesn't hurt more, it probably psychologically hurts more getting hit by the turkey leg than by that straight ride. But in but throughout my life. I found out how fucking funny the story was. <laughs> As a matter of fact, when we left sixth grade, we went to junior high school. And him and his sister were at my junior high school for a little while. But um, I, you know, sometimes I, like people would see him and I, I know they was, they were laughing because I told them the story. You know, and they would see him, and, and, and at the same time they laugh about the story, but they knew not to mess with him too. So it was a bad story, but it bigged him up. You know, was that one of those home. moments where you realized how funny you were too, and retelling that story? I just, I just, I just remember no matter how many, no matter how many times I I told it, they everybody laughed until they cried. Mm. Because it hurt, yeah. I was like, man, where are the teachers? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Every time you see an argument, they're there to break it up. And there had no teachers were around just watching, watching this shit. And that is crazy. So my family and I just got back from a vacation to Oregon. You ever been to Oregon before? Yeah, um, what's in Oregon? Portland uh, and... Portland's like the only, there are other towns that are cool, but in terms of comedy, Portland's probably about it. 
I don't think I've been to Portland, man. I've been to Portland, Maine. I don't think I've been to Oregon. So Oregon yes. is Portland and just a lot of like mountains and trees and rivers and lakes. I mean, it's a lot of wilderness. And so uh, stupid me got really ambitious because I lived in Oregon for a little bit. And I know somebody who still lives there and is essentially like a captain adventure. Like he goes whitewater rafting every weekend and they camp in the mountains and they, you know, they do all sorts of crazy outdoors things that my family likes the outdoors to a degree as well, but we like the outdoors in the daytime. We're not really big yeah. outdoors nighttime people camping and things like that. But I signed us up to go with him and a, a bigger group of people. My wife, me and my two young kids to go in the Oregon wilderness for three days and two nights, whitewater rafting the entire time, camping on the side of the river in an area, Tony, that was unironically called bear camp. And that's because oh, more black bears in this part of the Cascade Mountains than anywhere else in the U.S. Now, thankfully, we didn't see any bears, which we were told are more scared of us than we are of them. But it was an interesting time nonetheless, because like I said, my wife and I and our kids, like we don't even as much as like camp in the backyard. So this was completely off the grid. And I'm just wondering the last time you felt super off the grid. All the time. Yes. Well, um, off the, the, uh, when I did, um, what's it called? I did the National Lampoon Comedy Playoffs. Mm -hmm. And I think that was in 1989. Okay. So we were in uh, Nova Scotia, a cold weather training. What were the comedy playoffs? I've never heard of this before. Uh, National Lampoon uh, comedy. It was a contest held all over the all over the country. Huh. Then they had it. They had the big contest out in Vegas. Leslie Nielsen was the host of it on a TV show. Oh wow! It was on Showtime, and at that time it was HBO and Showtime. So I'm like, I'm almost there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh yeah and i told a story about when um when we were i talk about camping i just kind of mix in the stories but really it was about us doing training and like you watch these shows about searching for bigfoot mm -hmm. and they, they i mean everybody has the same encounter like he basically he does things to warn you, like yo, don't come around here. And he threw this big boulder, <clears throat> but not at us. But he threw it like it, and like he heard it crackling through bushes and branches and and being thrown. And it went over there. And ironically enough, the marine who I was our guide was a Native American, hmm. but he had like a. He had a he had a, a a southern or northern California accent, like a surfer, like hey dude, you know, but he was Native American. But he, when that happened, he's like, look, fellas, we are off the grid, and um, I don't know if you guys ever heard of Sasquatch or Bigfoot, like yeah, yeah of course. Like, oh, we're in this neighborhood, <laughs> so, so that was just far off the grid. But um, but when I do the yell for people. People who know him, like in Oregon, somewhere like that, you might have heard. It's a certain noise. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> and the same noise that I make, they're making on that little stupid TV show. Have you ever seen that show where they're looking for Sasquatch? No. Oh, is that yeah. the one with um um? It's just, some, it's just some people, and I use fucking Les, Les, Str Les Stroud has done that show before, right? The Survivor. No, I don't know, but you sit up and you watch the show all day long, waiting to see damn Bigfoot. You'll never get to see Bigfoot. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I felt about that thing. Like there was a really good true crime docu series on Hulu in the last couple of years. I spoke to the director of it. It was about these murders that happened in Bigfoot country, in like um. Humboldt County, like around Humboldt County, where obviously a bunch of pot is and was grown back when these murders happened. And so yeah. the belief was that it was Bigfoot, but this guy digs into it to see if it was Bigfoot or something else going on. It was a really well done series, but that's about as far as I go with something like Bigfoot, though. Like I, I recognize that there was a creature at some point in time that if yeah. it doesn't still probably did exist that mm -hmm. uh, that that fit the bigfoot bill but if that exists right now let's leave that thing alone 
You think you want to yeah. indoctrinate that thing into human society? Just let it be. Just let it be in the, the Cascade yeah. Mountains and wherever else. Let him live his life. <laughs> let him live his Sasquatch life. And uh, let me see. Off the grid. Off the grid, I was in a place called Seychelles, Africa. And we What's went that? into the Indian. It's, it's off the coast of Africa. It's a group of islands. Hmm. And we, 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 you're not supposed to go swim in the lagoon after dark. We have three beautiful pools on the resort. So mm. after dark, you're not supposed to go. But we went out, and like this whole group of us, but you have to go through barricades and barriers to get down there during the night. And we get down there, and, it's, and it's, we're kind of racing. It's me and this little boy who's autistic. He's French. He's nonverbal. Mm. And we saw something that, Oh, yeah, we just saw something crazy in the water. What? We saw something crazy in the water, man. You don't want to hear about this. Thing. What? We saw a merman. <laughs> yeah, a merman. Not a no titties involved with this one. It was just a merman. Like a half man, half kind of a I don't know, fish or something. No titties, just packs, huh? Yeah, but it's, yeah, he was a big dude though, man. And he didn't make a splash. He came out of the water and came whoop and went back in. And he was as fast as a sport bike. Like, you know, like you know, like like those you know like you know like like a ninja twelve hundred or something. Oh, like a crotch, like a crotch rocket. Crotch rocket. That's how fast he goes under the water. <laughs> <laughs> it was an animal. And uh I saw him in a little boy's song. And then we're like, yo, don't get in the water, don't get in the water. And the little boy's talking. His mother's like, oh my God, he's talking. And the father looked at me like, what'd you do, my son? She punch you in your throat, bastard. <laughs> but, I mean, we were clearly both shaking up. And I came to my room and I called my mom and said, yeah, hey, I wish everybody, I love everybody. I said, yeah, I saw a merman. Oh, my God. What have you been drinking over there? <laughs> yeah, so it come out to be the drunk black guy and the autistic French boy. The non it was an only witness. Boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the nonverbal autistic boy and a drunk black dude. Uh, so <laughs> we can wrap this up. <laughs> this, yeah, this didn't happen. Okay. <laughs> Do you swear but that it there, happened? Yeah, there, there's been research. I'm not the only one to see what I saw. Yeah. But the guy, the guy who runs the little, I think it's like a petting petting zoo or something over there. Huh. It's it's on the resort property. He was the one who said to me, "Don't." He says, "I have never seen what you saw, but I have family members and friends who have seen what you saw." Whoa. He says, "And yes, to my experience, he said the best thing is to just shut up." I said, all right. But then I was on Joe Rogan. I'm like, I got to have something good to talk about, man. I said, who else has a merman story? <laughs> Come to find out there's a couple of people with merman stories. Did you have other but, merman spotters reach out to you after Rogan? Yes, I did. I did some, uh, some, uh, yeah, some company who they explore the ocean and do this and do that, them, and then this one woman she's like a blogger or something mm -hmm. and so she she says that i saw it and then she i guess she did her research on my material you know i make things funny but yeah. it did happen i was i was attacked by an emu in australia i was maimed by pygmy goats at the london children's zoo <laughs> little bastards Goodness. yeah those little goats yeah. are assholes Yes, and I had on red sneakers. Hmm. Yeah. You were just ramming so, your shins then. They were just going nuts, but 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 uh, uh red does something to cattle. Did you know that? It yes, does something but, to because of bull bulls, yeah. yeah, bulls, goats, like uh sheep, they go nuts with red. I hadn't heard that about some of the other farm creatures, just uh just the bulls, obviously, from bullfighting. Yeah. But that's what the zookeeper in London said. Huh. And I was like, because the first thing that happened is we walk in, I'm the only black guy. 
and the monkey just started screaming. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I am not a poacher. Leave me. He's like, he's like, I'm not. <laughs> you, he was like, he told like all the other monkeys, like, that's the motherfucker right there, man. That's I fucking swear. That's fucking him. <laughs> like that's how he was. He was like. You, you motherfucker. I'm in fucking London now because I, you, you motherfucker. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and the zookeeper, she was trying to be, I guess, polite. Just do you know if your family is from Nigeria? <laughs> like, I guess they are. We had we we haven't spoken in three hundred years, <laughs> but <laughs> but there's a lot of Nigerians in London, so I guess you you know. But the monkey was definitely he was definitely like that fucking mm. dude right there. He's a poacher, Get, like like he was warning all the other animals in the zoo. That's the guy. That is the fucking guy right there. Fucking poacher. Because <laughs> I was making everybody laugh about it that day because like, he was like, that's the motherfucker right there, everybody, right there. You know, I gave him the voice of like a guy from Brooklyn. Yo, yo, son, oh, my mom, I swear if I get out of this cage, I'm cutting your throat, Slim. Like, that was just... <laughs> And and then and then poetic justice after that. I'm over there and they feed the little baby goats with the little pellets. And all of them just say, look at that guy's fucking shoes. Cause they had on some bright red Nike Bruins. <laughs> and my, they were cloth too, man. They were like, I'm like, you don't see this in America. Like, you know, that's a, it was a yeah. And I bought them there and then Fucking shoestrings had like a saliva all over. Just oh. fucking... Yeah, they was like just if they weren't ramming me, they were licking on my shoes, just going nuts. You got to throw those shoelaces away after that. I threw those whole shoes away, dude. What are yeah. you talking about? <laughs> the yeah. shoes. That was in the that was in the nineties, but I yeah, I went back to the same store and got the same shoes. I got the exact. I got the exact same shoes, but I got them. The next ones were like burgundy, like a like a blood burgundy. Hold hold on. Bam! These oh. are the shoes. Oh, <laughs> these are the replacement killers. Those are because slick. The, I like those. Yeah, and look, I got these in, I bought these in the 90s in England. And, those, uh, shoes, those shoes are 30 years old or 25 to 30 years old. Yeah, can't you tell? Yeah. They, I mean, they look pretty good for 25 to 30 years old. If I've, I've got shoes that old, I probably am not in possession anymore because they've been running right. Yeah, I was thinking about it because um, I was looking for something the other day and I saw those. I'm like, yo. I haven't seen these, but but they're like they're like oh, but I did buy those and um, mm. and and if you ever do go over there, stock up on all your suede, because it rains all the time. So it's stupid to buy a suede jacket or or suede shoes. Oh, they're going for That's cheap. What, they're going for cheap, yeah. <laughs> so because so, those are suede, they're suede kind of a suede feel. Mm. And I got those. Yeah, that's, that's dope. When when you were you were in the uh, Canadian wilderness for the uh, for that comedy tournament for Showtime, were there other comedians with you in the wilderness at that time? No, 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 no. That that was in the tournament. The, the actual contest was in Vegas at the Old Sahara Hotel. Okay, but the story was about when I was in the military and Bigfoot came. And so I can incorporate the, the the military trainer, but I could at the time I couldn't say I was in the military. I didn't say I was in the military. I just said I it was. Uh, I said uh, 
when I it was yeah it was it was, it was stupid. But if you research it, it's on uh it's called the National Lampoon Comedy Playoffs with Leslie Nielsen. He Did you interact with Leslie Nielsen at all? Yeah. Is he a cool yeah. dude? He's a cool dude. You know, of course everybody just came up and said, Hey, how you doing? How you doing? He's real professional, but I just remember thinking how much older he was than I thought he was. Like, like huh. when when you see him, you you don't you don't just go, "Hey, buddy, how you doing?" I'm she, you're like, "Yes, sir, no, sir," because it's like a grown grown man. Hmm. So at that time, he was in his sixties. Well, he had an interesting career because he was a, a serious character actor who played mostly bad guys up until Airplane, I believe, and they wanted yeah. to find somebody who had who had a sense of humor, but also had that deadpan demeanor that he obviously did. And that spawned a second yeah. career for him where he got to be a, a much more comedic actor in the last half of his uh, career in life. Yeah. I, I, I see him sometimes on uh what's the name of it? Is she the twilight zone, the old twilight zone yep. and uh, the Alfred Hitchcock presents. Like I saw um, on twilight zone. I saw um, what's his name? William Shatner. Hmm. He was afraid to fly. <laughs> what? That's interesting. Yeah, it, it's an episode of Twilight Zone, and he's afraid to fly. But in the future, you'll be all over the universe. <laughs> in films and in real life, flying up to space with Jeff yeah. Bezos. Yeah, all that shit, yeah. Hey, what do you I think about that sub, man? That's terrible. Yeah, it's it's really, I mean, it's sad, I guess, but it's also one of those things like a crash in NASCAR. Like you hate to see something horrible happen, but it's just like yeah. you're setting yourself up for this to be a possibility, right? Yeah, I yeah, man, fuck that. And then, and the guy was just joking around about it anyway. The guy he says it's controlled yeah. by like a, a little hand thing. Like, dude, I'm gonna need more technology. <laughs> Yeah, he he uh he definitely died an ironic comedian's death, even if that wasn't necessarily yeah. his role, right? Where you're joking about uh, something that that's gonna kill you, and then it actually does. Yeah. Last question, Tony, and I really appreciate the time today. I know that um Dave Chappelle made quick mention of you when he accepted his uh, Mark Twain Prize in the last couple of years. You were literally the first person that he singled out. What does Dave Chappelle mean to you? That's my man. I mean, you know, I started doing comedy. You know, he was always, uh, he's like my little brother in comedy. He was, you know, he was, and like, you know, people say, oh, you mentored Dave. Probably didn't mentor anybody. We just <laughs> hung out. We just hung out. I was just older than him. That's all. Right. <laughs> and it's funny how we, we knew each other before we knew each other. Because hmm. this little boy my mom used to babysit was his best friend. Huh. So David and his brother used to come over to my mom's house. Uh, you know, after school, my mom always ate cakes and after school cheese. So bang. And then another time, me and my friends, because we were 17, it's the last year of high school. So we went out snatching bags for trick-or-treat. Because at that age, you're too big to be trick-or-treating. But you still love candy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so why not just take it from the little kids? Right on. You've heard the expression, easy and ain't taking candy from a baby. Right. So that's what we were doing. <laughs> and um and then uh we, it was Halloween. We're all in New York and and uh, I said, Yeah, what you gonna do? He said, Man, I'm going in. I, I go in and watch my scary movies on Halloween because I remember Halloween, but he's telling all the details of the story. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, over by that wooden bridge? He goes, yeah. Did they take your bag over there too, Tony? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said, did they? He said, yeah, we saw them. And they all ran and it got into a big, gray, big, super big car. I said, it's called a Fury 3. He goes, yeah, but he didn't have paint. I'm like, I know, and it primed for it. <laughs> and he goes, did they stick your back still? Like, no, that was us. Because <laughs> I was 17, he was seven. Oh. I was in 12th. I was in 12th grade. He was in the second grade. But it's crazy. And then I called all my buddies who was there that night. I'm like, yo, guess what? 
<laughs> we saw day and, we, and so everybody's putting their pieces to the story all together yeah that's funny but 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 then after we started doing comedy man we hung out and like his uh his mom my ex-wife stuff used to sit together and then his mom you know became like friends because sometimes his mom would say yo can you take him out like mm -hmm. yeah so boom with my wife leaving early and then dave's mom leaving early who's gonna go straight home son <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> so but i mean he didn't know where to hang out and stuff but i did <laughs> It's crazy to think sure. about the amount of comedic talent that's come out of DC on the one hand, because yeah. it feels like it doesn't get enough love. Like you hear about Philadelphia yeah. cranking out comedy in Boston and New York and LA, obviously, which is where people go. But man, like per yeah. capita, DC's got it going on and has since like the early to mid 1980s, it feels like. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah, man. It's, uh, somebody's doing a documentary called The Mecca of Comedy now. Cause you know you got Wanda Sykes, mm -hmm. you you got of course you got Martin, you got Dave, you got Tommy Davidson, uh, Donnell. Lewis Black, Donnell, Lewis Black, uh, Whitney Cummins, DC Benny, uh, Whit Whitney's from DC. I did not realize that. Yeah, mm. uh, Patton Oswalt, uh, Teddy Carpenter. Uh, who else? Royale Watkins, Pierre. You ever heard of Pierre? No, he's done a. He's made a couple of films, and he was in a film with Halle Berry once. Yes, and then there's Warren Hutchinson. There's a guy who's he's like a showrunner out in L.A. He does stuff behind the scenes, hmm. and then uh, and then the girl from uh, what's the name of it? Man, what's the name of that? That new elementary school show. Uh, there's a show about that. Some they just her name is Lisa Ann Walton. Matter of fact, she went to my high school. Hmm. Yeah, and then you got Robin Montague. Robin Montague, she was in that movie "Talking Dirty After Dark" with Martin Lawrence. His first. Oh movie. yeah, yeah. And then, and then we got like the old school. We got Sylvia Traymore. Sylvia Traymore was on the panel on the Muhammad Ali roast, man, and she won Miss Miss Black America once. It, it I think her and the the girl from Good Times, Thelma, the sister. They tied for Miss Black America once. I'm trying, Andy Evans, he was the first guy to put me on television. It was cable access, but it was television. Yep. And he had a he had a he had a club called The Soul of Comedy. And then there's this other guy, uh, Chris Paul and Huggy Lonan. They're really big radio personalities all over all over the country. Greg Poole, he used to own the club along with uh, Andy Evans and man, it's just at, the list goes on and on and on. There's something like they say, something must be in the water, man. So, have you been interviewed for that documentary that's coming out then? Yeah, I've already been interviewed. As a matter of fact, I talked about it on the last Joe Rogan episode. Okay. It's not just listen, dude, if, if it wasn't for me, most of those people would be on there. I'm the one who told them about Earthquake. I mean, I put him in contact with Earthquake. And, oh, yeah, Earthquake's from D.C. too. Earthquake, yeah. Wanda Sykes, Donnell Rollins. Uh, who else? Uh, Tommy Davis and uh, who else did I put him in? Yeah. I think, yeah, D.C. Benny. put him in contact with a lot of people. There, there was a point in time where Martin Lawrence was maybe the funniest stand-up in America at some point in the 1990s. I, I feel like I haven't heard of him doing stand-up for a while, though. Is he still in that game at all? I'm pretty sure he is because I know he had a he had a tour called um what was it called Funny uh, AF Funny AF yeah mm -hmm. the tour the light Martin Lawrence Funny AF tour but I haven't done comedy with the brothers since uh, since Def Comedy Jam <laughs> yeah. is that right yeah, but he's one of the first comedians he is the first I always tell people he is the first comedian I met after I became a comedian him and another guy named Pierre. Because I walked on stage, I shook hands with a guy named Kevin Anthony and Danny Williams. I wasn't a comedian yet. I went on stage, I ripped the first time, it came off, and the first two guys I met was Martin Lawrence and Pierre. So I say, those are the last two guys I met when I was a regular guy, and then boom, when I became a comedian, those are the first two guys I met. Dude, that is wild. Yeah. You just you knew after that first time and the first time that you killed too that that was it for you. 
that was it. I went up there and I'm stuck, man. I have nothing. And this guy in the front said, hey, look, his leg is shaking, <laughs> which it was. I had to hold the mic with two hands because my hands were shaking. And my leg was shaking. And then, and I said, hey, but your stomach is shaking. And everybody laughed. And I'm like, hey, man, but don't worry about it. You know, I used to be fat. I said I was a whopping 70 pound. But I was only this tall. <laughs> and the room erupts and laughs, and I just go from there. Bang, 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 bang. That's all you got to do to feed the machine is give it laughter. And I got you. Yeah, and all these years later, I'm getting a chance to uh, to finally see you live in person, as many others are at Joe Rogan's Comedy Mothership. It is July 7th through 9th. Look, if you're listening right now and it's a week out, don't waste your time. Go grab tickets because if it's a couple days beforehand, these things are going to be sold out. I have two I mean, tickets. Tourists are going to grab them all up if locals don't grab them. So I'm just encouraging people on a weekly basis to enjoy what is happening with stand-up comedy in Austin right now. Tony, thank you so much for the time today, man. Right on. I'll be there with bells on, shorty. Can't wait, man. All right, man. One love, dog. Thanks to Gentleman Jesus for the intro and outro music. Hear more of his work at GentlemanJesus.com. And thanks to you for hanging out. For more of the show and to connect on social media, visit BooksOnPod.com. We'll talk to you next time on Books on Pod.